हाँ दिस कार इज डन पक्का आई टोल्ड यू ना दिस नो वे दिस विल कंटिन्यू टू स्टे ऑन सेल these are the kind of statements that auto journalists will often make after a car has been discontinued but while we may find product flaws it's rarely to the extent that we think it will end a car's existence the hyundai santro has gone off sale it's now discontinued just 4 years after it was brought to the market and i can just remember those couple of years back that i was at their factory in chennai driving the camouflage prototype and witnessing hyundai make the santro's nostalgia in their ad campaign <laughs> Who's chopping those onions, man? At the time of its launch, we knew that the Santro would be up against some challenges, but the Santro's discontinuation seems to have less to do with the product's flaws, but the circumstances that the car found itself in. Let's begin by talking about what the Santro got right, and what stood out above all else was the interior quality. In a segment largely dominated by cheap and budget grade plastics, the Santro stood out as something actually quite premium for the price. It also gave you a proper four-cylinder petrol engine in a segment that almost exclusively consisted of three-cylinder motors and the AMT was by far one of the smoothest we'd driven irrespective of the segment. Of course there were product flaws like the lack of steering adjustment, improper rear headrests that weren't really of particularly any use and no alloy wheels but at the same time these weren't really deal breakers and let's not forget you also got goodies like touchscreen infotainment and rear ac vents but the first real problem seems to be something that hyundai created themselves now at the time of the santro's launch the hyundai grand i10 was still on sale Now granted the Santro is a cheaper car aimed at a budget conscious buyer but most people could have made the stretch for the Grand Ten a car that is more spacious more practical and also more powerful and if you could get a bigger car maybe by compromising on a few frills why wouldn't you and then just a year after the Santro's launch came the Grand i10 Neos a car that was even more powerful even more spacious even more practical and again if you could get that bigger car it was more enticing for a buyer to make that push and move up a segment to koi ye kyun le wo na le at the end of the Santro's life prices ranged between 4.9 and 6.42 lakh and given how most budget cars are bought in the mid to top end models The Grand i10 Neos, well, its base and mid-range models, the Magna and Sports, now became available. And even if customers did walk in for a Santro, you can bet your bottom dollar that the salespersons and dealerships pushed them towards the Neos. If you don't know already, six airbags are going to become mandatory in all new cars really, really soon. Now we've made a video on our perspective about the subject, but the decision has already been made. and this presents a challenge in terms of upgrading or reengineering products which while not impossible is expensive and is adding more airbags really the solution when the santro is scoring 2 out of 5 stars at global and caps crash test while its rival the tiago is managing 4 now an affordable cars business case always depends on volumes There's a big gap in what Hyundai would make selling 2000 Alcazars every month as opposed to selling 2000 Santros every month. For one car that's reasonable or maybe even successful, but for the other it's a failure. And when alternatives like the Tata Tiago are selling 4 to 6000 units a month or the Maruti Suzuki Espresso is selling 6 to 8000 units a month, there is obviously a lot of market potential that the Hyundai Santro is missing out on managing between 1800 to 2000 sales every month. and when the product does not get the tailwinds you were hoping for it doesn't really make sense to invest more money into upgrading or reengineering the safety perspective especially when the small car market overall has seen a downturn year on year another hiccup for the santro is what powered it Now Hyundai did manage some decent savings by re-engineering the 1.1 liter Epsilon engine from the previous generation Santro as opposed to developing something brand new from scratch. But the Santro was the only car that was using this engine. Now powertrains are of the absolute essence when it comes to economies of scale. Heck, Lamborghini, Porsche and Bentley also share their powertrains to ensure profitability and the best possible margins. So it doesn't make sense to have one engine running for one car, especially when it isn't a volume driver to begin with. And the upcoming BS 6.2 emission norms are guaranteed to add further load. 
with improvements expected on the fuel management systems front, which will most likely entail upgrades in terms of the semiconductor technology involved. Basically meaning that Hyundai will have to invest more money into production for a car that isn't bringing them more money. And in some part, the Santro's lack of popularity was down to its polarizing design. We often underestimate how much a car's design matters in making that all-important purchase decision. The Tata Tiago looked cool and balanced, the Renault Quid looked different, and while the Wagonar was decidedly functional, there was nothing over the top or polarizing about its design. The same could not be said about the Hyundai Santro because the design lacked both universal appeal as well as wow appeal. And let's not forget, while it was called the Santro, it did look a lot like a reworked i10. So these are the variables that ultimately did the Santro in. A big part of the car's demise is the fact that the car wasn't future-proof even if the product did deserve better. So what do you think that Hyundai could have done differently? And as always, if you did not like this video, give it a thumbs down. But if you did, give it a thumbs up, like it and share it as well. And of course, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe and tap that bell icon too.